Hello, everybody, and welcome to our next Ipanema scientific online lecture that will be given by Dr. Petri Nikitin, uh, who will talk to us about new opportunities for biosensing, medical diagnostic, and nanobiotechnology based on ultra-sensitive optical and magnetic measurements. So, Petri, thank you for uh, the lecture that you will give us, and uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning. In your scale, it's still morning. In Russia, it's exact noon. So uh, uh, I would like to this lecture talk about uh, different applications, and uh, some of them exactly fit to our the title of our common project. And I am from General Physics Institute of Russia Academy of Science, and here is the logo of our institute. So, um, talking in biosensors, uh, I'd like to, to, to remind that in our nature, there is a perfect mechanism in our body when, for example, nitrophil is able, due to hematoxis, to fight, in this example, bacteria, including the bacteria in our body, and to, to follow such bacteria by a residual and tiny amount of a, a metabolite which produce uh, bacteria and still capture it and to remove from our body. So our main goal is somehow to uh, imitate this and develop something uh, uh, like a Terranostics nanorobots, which have a sensing part, uh, which is still uh, the weak point in such development, because the other parts, such kind of uh, action part, when uh, such nanorobot can kill or cure some cells, and uh, definitely it should be agent. I will not discuss any things about agents because it's very well popular, well, very well developed area. And even a uh, few years ago, Nobel Prize uh, was given in chemistry for three scientists, uh, which develop a lot of uh, micro engines. So uh, still in this uh, dream, the weak point is the sensing, how to, to sense uh, and to find the pathogen. And uh, except such uh, fantastic applications like nanorobot, still this, uh, this part is very important for many analytical implications and for, for uh, simple in vitro application. Nevertheless, we try to develop the approach which is uh, compatible with both, with, with uh, uh, in vivo application and uh, in uh, application in uh, vitro. For example, uh, uh, a few years ago, we proposed a concept how it's possible to program nanoagents to, to, to catch specific cells and our particular interest to catch the cancer cells. And here are example of um, some structure when we, for, for nanoparticle, we can generate specific uh, corona, which in this case, for example, uh, recognize the cancer cells only if in the environment there is a one type of molecule in here is fluorescein and uh, second conditions is there is a node uh, as the second part of molecule here is a uh, chloramphenicol so only in this logic bullets when uh, there is a yes gate for fluor uh, fluor uh, molecules and no gate for a uh, for a chloramphenicol, the nanoparticles are able to, to find and to bind with the cell and later on kill it. So uh, particular for this investigation, we develop uh, a lot of magnetic optical uh, methods to, to control design of such hybrid uh, necrostructure, which can uh, perform multiplex analysis based on Boolean logics. I will not go too much in detail. It's already published and uh, even uh, we published review how it's possible to construct such uh, nanorobots. But what I'd uh, like to tell you that 
uh, in this development, we, we, we uh, like uh, very much to use uh, magnetic particles. Why magnetic? And uh, first of all, um, they are very popular and uh, very simple reactions was published uh, long ago. But the main motivation is uh, each of us contains in our in body up to five gram of iron. So iron is not, um, I would say, uh, external material for our body. It cannot be synthesized in our body, but nevertheless, um, uh, the, um, these irons come to our uh, uh, body only with the food. And iron deficiency led to several diseases, many of them, for example, anemia. And also our blood contain 2% of homoglobin and 70% of homoglobin is the iron. So iron, uh, one of the element which is most compatible to be used in vivo. And uh, moreover, when we inject to mouse a lot of uh, iron excited particles, we dramatically increase the hemoglobin as a name. They became much stronger and healthier than not, not injected particles. Probably this is the reason why many mm, uh, iron oxide particles are improved to be injected in human and they actively mm, uh, used for uh, uh, magnetic separation, moving, heating, bioelectric field can be visualized. For example, they increase the contrast of MRI and uh, as I mentioned, uh, well controlled, they have uh, rather safe behavior and uh, controllable degradation. But for us, it's so, so important that uh, we can detect them with very high sensitivity. But first of all, uh, what type of iron particles we should use for biosensing? It's not simple colloidal particle. And uh, we normally synthesize the particles, uh, such particle, small particles, uh, uh, nuclear and cover it in a polymer shell. Why we cannot to use a single but big particles? The magnetism, it's uh, arranged in such a way that if we generate a big particles, uh, uh, it's energetically, more convenient uh, to, to the system to split in domain, do, the different domains. So as soon as we have a multi-domain magnetic material, then we have uh, residual magnetization and such particles stick each other. It cannot be used uh, even, even in uh, biosensing. So what we do, we synthesize very small uh, single domain particles but to increase number of magnetic materials, we have to uh, uh, put uh, uh, them in a common envelope, for example, polymer shell. And another uh, advantage uh, to, to such a polymer shell, we can easily, not very easily, but still we can immobilize some recognition molecules, which, uh, which uh, provide us opportunity to target it, um, uh, our in, uh, molecules of our interest. But another most important subject, it's not so difficult to, to, to catch the, the, the analyte. And much more difficult not to catch unwanted analyte, to, to, to have a so-called law, not specific bonding. It's a little bit a uh, different story, but uh, a more complicated story, but it, uh, it, it's possible to reach it. Uh, how we detect magnetic particles? About 22 years ago, we proposed magnetic particle quantification method, but no linear magnetization. We use a coil system and produce magnetic fields and two frequency. And then as soon as nonlinear magnetic materials appear, we have a generation in our coil, some uh, component in a combinatorial frequency, and we can detect uh, such components electronically. And by this way, we can uh, measure, exactly quantify the number of magnetic particles in no transparent uh, uh, media. 
the other important features is that we have a very huge dynamic range, like a seven orders linear dynamic range and very high sensitivity. We can detect uh, up to 0 0.9 nanogram of iron oxide particles or uh, up to uh, um, 30, 40 picogram of specific magnetic structure, which have a vortex mag magnetization. And uh, also uh, such methods are not sensitive to, to um, exosonic iron in our body or uh, other paramagnetic diamagnetic material, which, which is uh, linear. So they did not contribute um, uh, to magnetic signal and we can, for example, um, have nine order of magnitude higher amount of uh, paramagnetic or diamagnetic than our uh, ferromagnetic material, but still not, uh, uh, not, uh, be, uh, not sense such uh, materials. We use such uh, um, uh, methodology for many biosensing applications and uh, now uh, uh, for some application in vitro, but now I'd like to, uh, okay, and also about uh, 30 years, a very simple um, experimental setup was, uh, was proposed uh, and we published it in a magnetic journal when we can put uh, the mouse or rat's tail in a coil of such crystal, inject magnetic particle, uh, because in a <clears throat> tail, there is a one uh, arteria and two vein, And by this way, we can uh, study the dynamics of the particles in, in a um, bloodstream and generally in the living body. And uh, specifically when we use a so-called magnetic ver uh, vertex uh, uh, nanodisc, which have a very strong non-linearity in the rather small magnetic field. We can even modulate the response of already injected uh, magnetic uh, material to the mouse, which is anesthetized here by using third component. For example, when we uh, use such vortex this just without any external magnetic field, we have a such type of behavior the magnetic structure in a uh, bloodstream. When we uh, switch on external magnetic field, we can uh, modulate uh, uh, such response due to the change of orientation of such structure in a bloodstream. Okay, another um, uh, uh, technology we extensively used in our development is a so-called phase uh, uh, spectral phase interferometry and spectral correlation interferometry to study molecular interaction. Basically speaking, simple uh, microscopic glass slim we use as a biochip. It's a little bit similar with a, a surface plasma resonance, but uh, we don't uh, measure the bulk refractive index. Uh, uh, and uh, we use very cheap consumables, simple microscopic uh, slim as a biochip. And uh, what was the main idea when the, there is a chemical or oh, biochemical reaction on the surface of a glass, we have a change of optical thickness of our biomolecules in the top of the glass surface. And this move out the boundary um, uh, uh, of refractive index because in the water we have refractive index 1.33 and in a solid phase I would say we have a bound uh, refractive index 1.5. So as soon as this boundary shift in specific scheme we can measure the thickness change by measuring the correlation signal of camera. The, uh, and when we produce some three channels compact device and one channel uh, devices we call the microscope and this device for example even have no po separate power supply the connection to usb port is enough for us to monitoring the reactions on the surface of the glass so now i try to switch to a new results we we, we, we get uh, during last two years 
And uh, I start with a more simple topic like a biosensing method, which exactly fit to, to, to our common project, uh, like identification of uh, DNA molecules, a detection of biologically active substance in food, and uh, how we develop some new methods for me medical diagnostics. But first of all, um, uh, uh, suddenly we face this very unexpected phenomenon in a gold field. What we try to, on the gold surface of, of nanoparticles, we try to immobilize single strain DNA, which having a target cell receptor, and we expected that such a, a nano agent, which you find uh, our uh, cell, and specifically cancer cells, and uh, we will bind to the cancer cell. But suddenly we have uh, uh, we, we found that the, the, this agent would not able to bind the cell. Why? What we found that as soon as we use a single strain oligotide with some receptor, actually they bind it over the surface of the uh, gold nanoparticles and such a receptor are not visible to be interacted with the gold surface, but or with the cells. But as soon as in the media, there is a complementary DNA and there is a, a hybridization and uh, such a receptor became accessible. So, uh, and by this way, we are able, for example, for, for in vivo experiments, uh, uh, to activate our uh, uh, our uh, particles near cancer cells because some cancer cells uh, have uh, um, fragments of uh, uh, DNA which we use here complementary DNA so in the vicinity of our cancer cells our structure activated and uh, this receptor uh, are not bonded on the surface and they are able to, 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 to interact with the cells. But uh, in terms of our project, uh, uh, a more uh, relevant application is a very simple uh, method when we detect uh, records without amplification, records uh, small value like a 30 femtogram in, uh, of DNA in a very small sample uh, volume, which uh, approximately um, uh, corresponded to a typical DNA output from the liquid uh, uh, from the biopsy samples, like uh, 50 atoms of uh, uh, DNA molecules, each or this amount. Uh, but uh, switching to 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 the uh, activity related to our project with a simple paper-based strip DNA, when we have a, a, a simple, uh, like a pregnancy test uh, uh, strips, immunochromatograph strips with a, a streptovidin in a control line. And we have uh, in conjugation part, our gold particles with a single strain DNA. And he, in this example, with a biotin, as soon as uh, there is uh, no selective or complementary DNA, such a uh, structure cannot interact with streptovidin and we have no optical signal here. We are, uh, such gold particles are not bound in a, uh, uh, in, a, in a control line, but as soon as in the media there is a complementary DNA, the now uh, nano agents is activated and we have a very well visible uh, uh, control uh, test line in our strips and we have very extremely uh, attractive uh, low detection limit up to 10 uh, minus 14 moles and uh, as soon as I know still know um, because uh, three referee confirm it, there is a, there is a worldwide record uh, uh, for direct uh, detection of DNA without any kind of amplification. Okay, another um, system which uh, of our interest uh, 
the, the, the uh, sensor mechanism, by sensing mechanism, which can be realized in a living body, but also in the uh, uh, um, agriculture um, field, um, is a, we propose uh, some kind of uh, uh, analyte induced inhibition and a particle aggregation when we can detect, uh, uh, realize very simple arrangement. For example, uh, we uh, produce two types of nanoparticles. One of them, we also like uh, uh, magnetic particles, but here it's not uh, principally important. Magnetic particles allowed us to use this mechanism in no transparent uh, uh, liquids like a milk. We, we can detect uh, chloramphenicol in milk by very simple methodology. We put in a milk two type of uh, nanoparticles. And as soon as there is a target molecules in high concentration, then uh, they protect the aggregation of such particles. And in, uh, um, to measure the hydrodynamic uh, uh, clusters in such media, we have a, a very small diameter of such uh, clusters. But uh, as soon as there is no target molecule, uh, such nanoparticles aggregate and we have a big aggregates we can detect very easily uh, by uh, dynamic late scattering. Uh, another our activity during two years was devoid to new development of new methods for uh, selection of uh, optimal immunoreagents, and we also use magnetic uh, particles conjugates. The idea is very simple. When we have uh, mm, our target solution, we put here the, uh, our immunoreagents of study, but in uh, uh, immobilized on uh, magnetic particles. Then there is an interaction when we separate the magnetic uh, uh, content and to put in a, uh, our uh, literal flow and detect how many particles uh, are bounded to, to, to our um, control uh, uh, test line. So if we make such measurements into three different conditions, for example, different time of incubation, different uh, volume uh, sample, then we can determine very easily kinetic and equilibrium constant, uh, which uh, defines such efficiency, such interaction in the liquids. Moreover, we are able to, to uh, uh, quantitatively evaluate a fraction of biomolecules on the surface of nanoparticles, which are capable to act for active uh, targeting, because uh, if we have a very poor procedure for biocommunication, it could be uh, such a way that our recognition molecules not a pro with no, by not a proper site immobilized on nanoparticles. And we have a lot of them, but they are not active. By this way, we, we very easily can select uh, the best uh, uh, available immunoreagents and to use it our sensors uh, by sensing application and also uh, uh, verify such method by, by our um, interferometric devices uh, with more or less standard procedure when we uh, have an antigen on the surface, then we put antibody and recorded the binding kinetics, then we remove solution and put the um, buffer and we have a dissociation of our antibody and capture, uh, to, to, to monitor such sensogram, we are able to calculate uh, so-called K-on and K-off, which are which, uh, very important parameter to, to use the best uh, available antibody for biosensing applications. So uh, by this procedure, this year we published a paper, how we select um, the uh, antibody to detect um, the mycotoxin, ofrotoxin, uh, also by ba paper-based strips and magnetic uh, nanolabels. 
the it's well known that uh, aflatoxin is a product of uh, different uh, two type of fungi it's one of the most dangerous dangerous uh, mycotoxin which widely present in our food in many countries detection limit it's uh, i would say rather moderate because uh, normally the regulation are based on available technology and uh, in russia for example in a uh, food for adult it's uh, uh, should not be presented in uh, five um, picogram per one gram of a uh, grain or other product now in the european uh, commission declare the other principle the uh, concentration of such agent should be as low as um, uh, uh, Low reasonable achievables because <laughs> it's not possible to forbid it because then nobody will be uh, able to control. And uh, gold standard is a uh, mass, uh, uh, or oh, sorry, uh, mass uh, or liquid uh, uh, mass uh, spectrometer which have a detection limit um, 0.01 nanogram per meal. So we construct the sensors, uh, immunocardiographic strips. When we more or less standard, but not standard features that we interrogated by our magnetic detector. Uh, so when such strip put in a, a, a food samples and that's a, a low concentration of uh, uh, aflatoxin, um, the uh, Antibody or the uh, uh, magnetic particles are captured with a uh, are well, well, find the the uh, conjugate of uh, uh, BCR with uh, aflatoxin, which deposits in the test line. So we have a very small signal, or oh, it's a low concentration. We have a very big signal because such particles. Uh, uh, bind very well. When there is a uh, big concentration of uh, of uh, ofratoxin in our test samples, then such uh, uh, agents are occupied all available sites uh, uh, in uh, magnetic conjugates, and they are not able to interact with the test line, and we have a, a, a low signal. So it's so called um, the um, Competitive assay, and by this uh, assay we um, we find that the detection limit uh, eleven picogram with a simple, as I told, paper based, uh, um, um, not microfluidic. It's a porous paper structure that we are able to detect about uh, eleven picogram, and uh, more important comparison, for example, with the gold particles. It's have an extraordinary dynamic range, like a five order of magnitude, and very, very uh, steep slope of calibration curve. So the signal change in about uh, uh, um, 1,000 fold, time, 1,000 time. So we are able to, to, to provide the uh, accuracy about 7% in both regions in a low concentration and high concentration. As I told, uh, it's very rapid, 20 minutes, no need qualified person, no need well-equipped uh, equipment like a liquid, uh, uh, high pressure liquid uh, uh, chromatography and uh, cost efficient even, even for a single test because many, many technology laboratory based they have to collect a lot of samples and uh, then in a, uh, one batch of or one day of experiments to to uh, to make all analysis because it's not re reasonable to use a device for 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 for, for single analysis also uh, um, we use this technology okay uh, we use i will be quickly uh, we use this technology for, uh, uh, which is also our main interest for medical revel, uh, relevant antigens and for steroid stimulated hormones. We also published uh, 
recently we were able to detect uh, disease which related to uh, uh, a low concentration of the hormones and also disease which uh, uh, the, uh, which uh, uh, occur and the uh, such uh, thyroid stimulating hormones in a high concentration is a marker of such disease. Oh, okay. I will also switch to another type of application because during past time we all um, uh, put our blood uh, and test it for uh, uh, do we have an antibody for coronaviruses and everybody like to 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 have an antibody and we make a vaccination uh, to have such antibody which fights the pathogen but there is a uh, some not proper for us antibody it's so-called autoimmune antibody which attacked our own organism and uh, cause uh, autoimmune disease and nobody wants such disease. And there is a very serious um, reviews that uh, show that uh, economic impact of our immune disease is uh, twice that of cancer. And uh, moreover, what we try to find when we develop such sensors, the um, um, result uh, or threshold concentration of such uh, uh, marker of such disease are uh, quite different dependent upon the uh, producer of such diagnostic kits. For example, for uh, anti globulin, so the antibody to this antigen, the um, uh, acceptable detection uh, level uh, were at more than uh, <laughs> Uh, two times or 20 times. And also for uh, another anti toroid pyroxidase, it also varied. So, our uh, idea was that for antibody, it's uh, no, no, not uh, uh, enough to measure the concentration needs. It's uh, uh, necessary to find a way how uh, somehow to measure the degree of uh, aggressiveness of such antibody and we use uh, and we update um, our device for multi-parametric biosensors as i call based on spectral correlation interferometry and propose methodology uh, not very complicated but it turns very informative uh, not a mobilized antigen to um, uh, uh, first of all, immobilized antigen on our sensor chip, but not to measure kinetics on this uh, uh, stage, because in this stage, uh, the many confirmation sites are deformed. It's not a native antigen when we measure, and typically everybody measure the by label free the kinetics in this way. We propose that we have to introduce a second step because all antibody have a do two, uh, two arms to interact with the antibody. So we specifically pump the antigen and during the, the um, bonding events of already captured antibody with such uh, antigen, we, we, we calculate the, the uh, kinetic constants and, uh, okay, I will go a little bit faster. Uh, what is the main idea? By this way, we are able to uh, detect uh, with a label free, we are able to detect a very low concentration of uh, anti, uh, autoimmune antibody for different uh, autoimmune disease and uh, uh, dynamic range uh, to low detection limit in five order of magnitude better than a standard ELISA, but more important, what we find and we introduce new criteria, not only based on concentration measurements, but also measure on kinetics of such antibody. Basically speaking, um, we investigated a lot of patient samples and we find that some of the patients uh, have very low concentration of uh, uh, for example, antibody to, to thyroid peroxidase, but they have a very active antibody. And clinically, 
the more uh, more uh, uh, experience more problem with the health that the people which have a uh, much higher a much higher concentration but uh, much low uh, uh, much low uh, kinetics of this antibody but basically speaking to be sure we like an animal produce all polyclonal antibody and it's well known for biosensing application with a bio polyclonal antibody it's not possible to uh, just to generate polyclonal antibody it's uh, we need to uh, for select such animals which produce the best antibody i know for example one american company which produce a perfect antibody but fine uh, but they're limited in their cells because they have only one rabbits which produce enough good polyclonal antibody and they cannot produce from one rabbits more antibodies and cells they sell and they are not able somehow to uh, reproduce such uh, such vaccination to other animals so uh, basically speaking uh, we, we we introduce uh, the criteria uh, to investigate how we, it's possible to measure not only concentration of antibody but uh, to evaluate the aggressiveness but uh, another uh, type of uh, 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 nanoparticles which we published um, my my students published i am not course of this paper has uh, published uh, the uh, new way to produce a hybrid uh, um, uh, nanoparticles it's very simple way just if you have an immunoglobulin and you heat it up then you produce very perfect uh, uh, protein particles and the dimensions of these particles depend only two parameters how long um, uh, such uh, immunoglobulin is uh, is uh, uh, heated, and uh, what is the page of the uh, page of the media where they heat? And so, for uh, about let's say for uh, 60, uh, 60 seconds, it's possible to generate uh, antibody which have about uh, nanoprotein nanoparticles which have about uh, one hundred uh, nanometers. Moreover, uh, with a simple immunoglobulin, which uh, students sometimes use from their own blood, they have somehow um, when we they they uh, uh, deliver to blood for uh, uh, to test uh, the um, uh, uh, presence of uh, antibody for coronaviruses in uh, clinics, they ask to 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 give them additional tube. For their own experiments that they doing in their lab so from their human uh, immunoglobulin they add uh, for example um, uh, so-called uh, um, uh, therapeutic antibody it's a transtuzumab it's monoclonal antibody uh, directed to uh, breast cancer cells so to save such uh, such antibody it's possible even when there is a only 10 percent of therapeutic antibody but uh, as is uh, their own uh, uh, immunoglobulin from their own blood nevertheless such uh, protein particles are very well recognized uh, cancer cells and not interact with the uh, with the intact cells more, more more important that it's possible to add in such reactions magnetic material magnetic nanoparticle fluorescence particle and uh, generate also very very good particles there is a screen uh, there is a different pictures and more, more more of such particles are given in the paper and also a reviewer of the paper asks them to evaluate the so-called uh, e factor um, uh, um, this is a mass uh, ratio between waste material and product in this case uh, there is a record value which is equal 16 usually technology usual technology produce a, 
uh, hybrid uh, nanoparticles, they have much higher ratio. So about one million of the used reagents only give a product and another almost million uh, uh, units of mass are wasted. And here it's quite different situation and particle very efficient for, for, for a, um, a, a optical and MRI tomography when they have both magnetic particles and fluorescence particles. But previous, we published a lot of papers in this area when we use uh, magnetic particles with uh, so-called uh, metal organic framework shells, which um, uh, very convenient shells to, to produce a, a porous uh, shell and to fill it, uh, for example, if we have a magnetic core, the particle became um, magnetic, if we fill it, with a cytostatic material. Some of them like doxorubicin have an external fluorescence. And when we put, put a, a specific antibody and to, to, to load it, such a shell with the therapeutic samples to exploit for cell targeting for sensors and to, to, to detect this by our own technology and by standard MRI. And for example, um, such particles are efficiently used for in vitro experiments when we have a, a particles with a, a loaded uh, with a, a, a magnetic organic framework shell loaded with doxorubicin and with a, directed with antibody to a, a human uh, a breast cancer cells and uh, uh, the experiments show very clear pictures that uh, such particles capture the um, cancer cells and not interact with the uh, intact cells and uh, kill the cancer cells. And also uh, the, for the first time, the MOF uh, magnetic organic framework particles were used for uh, in vivo experiments to deliver both functional genes and uh, some kind of small molecules imitate the, the uh, 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 therapeutic drugs. But uh, 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 these experiments, uh, uh, which I mentioned before, was done in uh, vitro, but the uh, main critical problem or in nanomedicine is that many agents which perfectly works in vitro show very poor performance in vivo. For example, in a, a good review and the most, uh, uh, I would say, um, outer, uh, most authoritative uh, journal like Nature Review, uh, a lot of people, of course, a big number of courses, uh, make a comprehensive literature review and find that uh, only in uh, average, only 0% of the particles which uh, um, provide uh, very good results for in vitro in cell culture study uh, have very poor delivery to uh, uh, solid tumors like 0%, 0.7%. Moreover, such a type of percentage actually not depend. Do you put an antibody or other um, directed agents on another particle or not? Uh, moreover, uh, it was many years a uh, dream that there is a called, uh, so-called uh, enhanced permittivity and retection effect, uh, uh, which was discovered uh, long ago uh, when, uh, uh, when the um, living organism have a cancer, a tumor cancer, then due to the uh, not properly structure of the blood vessels near the structure, it's very well accumulated the nanomaterial, but it turns out that this effect perfectly works for rodent and not uh, works for human. So uh, not all experiments which dying in a mouse can be, or rats can be extrapolated to humans. So we, what we try to, how we try to avoid this problem effectively use our devices. Uh, it's well known that um, uh, 
the main problem in cancer, not a cancer itself, but uh, later metastasis. By, by definition, it's a, a fourth a little stage, a final stage is a, uh, when the uh, living body have a metastasis in the lung, it's first of all. What we propose, we propose to <clears throat> deposit nano uh, uh, particles with a doxorubicin and <coughs> immobilize in, in a red blood cells. When we inject such particles, because it's very popular activity that the people try to, to use a shell of a red blood cells and to fill it uh, with a doxorubicin or other static. But uh, there is a, about 20 years ago or even more activity to use a natural cells to deliver um, uh, to deliver uh, the uh, 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 treatment agents to cancers. But uh, it is, is not very successful. What we propose, but uh, the method of solution, but specifically for lung. When we use a red blood cell as a carrier of our particles with a doxorubicin. And uh, uh, we efficiently treat a metastasis with such particles. And uh, without uh, treatment in control experiments, we have a lot of uh, metastasis. And uh, what, what is the main idea? Uh, when we use a, 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 a Erythrocyte is a carrier of our nanoparticles with some capture because, because in a uh, loom, the erythrocyte, which, oh, I'm sorry, uh, in a normal, in, in a normal um, situation, the, the uh, size of, a, a size of a, a, a erythrocyte is a, about seven micron and two micron disease direction. But actually in a loop, they can propagate in a capillary which have a, about a 0 0.7 micron. So uh, to provide our breasts, the red blood cells should twist it and to penetrate uh, and propagate uh, in capillary, which much smaller than the diameter of such uh, cells in the normal conditions. So the main idea was just to mechanically scratch the nanoparticles which uh, are bonded to, to, to such particles. And we succeeded. In certain surface chemistry, we find that um, with a specific coating, we are able to increase uh, the deliver of nanoparticles in a uh, lung up to record value. 124. So up to 40% of ejected dose will be delivered to lung. And uh, by use this methodology, we treat the uh, cancer cells uh, in uh, rats. And um, uh, we we able to decrease at least in uh, uh, three times the number of metastasis and the average size. And by the way, this paper well cited during three years, it's uh, in, a, in a Google, it's already cited about 90 times. Uh, another activity, I will try to be shorter. Uh, how we be uh, able to, to uh, uh, increase efficiency of uh, deliver of nano medicine uh, for specifically in tumor is just to increase uh, the time circulation in a, in a, our bloodstream. What is a, a problem? Uh, we have a very perfect immune system which protect us, but at the same time, it's led us that as soon as we injected particles during, uh, I would say, few minutes, it will be captured by our immune system, which is very perfect uh, uh, features, which uh, able to save our lives, but uh, not favorable for many um, biomedical um, application of uh, um, nano agents. And one of the solution just to cover it by inert structure, but this inert structure have a 
like a polyethylene glycol, have a lot of also drawbacks. One of them, it can be used only once. As soon as you inject such uh, pegylation nanoparticles, immune system produce a uh, antibody, and the next time antibody will capture these nanoagents. So uh, one of the simple way which we is just to increase the dose to saturate our immune system, which are not able to, uh, to remove all particles, and they will circulate for, 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 for a long time, for example, for 40 minutes. But obvious toxicity is a, uh, obvious drawbacks is we increase toxicity, increasing the big dose. But there is a, we publish another way um, just to use a two sequential uh, uh, injection. One of them to use a blocker particles, and then we use a therapeutic particles. The idea uh, to use as a blocker particle as uh, small toxicity to toxic particles as possible. And we, but their role is to prolong the circulation of therapeutic particles, which successfully um, uh, fulfills the medical tax. But uh, another way we find uh, not to put too much external material, but just to, to stimulate our immune system to process our own red blood cells. Um, um, as a matter of fact, that each uh, day our body remove uh, our immune system remove one percent of our erythrocyte from our bloodstream. Um, so during one hundred years or one hundred days, we have uh, fully replace uh, um, replacement uh, the red blood cells to a new one. We try. Uh, to find the most uh, delicate way to increase such process in uh, short time windows. The idea is that we use the antibody against um, uh, the red blood cells, a very small concentration. So our own organism became a process. The <clears throat> uh, so artificially agents uh, aging the uh, red blood cells. So it's caused a, 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 block, a blockage of our immune phagocytose system. And this is dramatic, dramatically prolonged the circulation of the particles in the bloodstream. So such particles can find proper tumor, for example. In this case, we use a, a mouse with a tuber and we put here magnet. As soon as without particles, we are not able to see such tumor by MRI. As soon as we have a particle, but without uh, such antibody, we are not able to visualize it because they very quickly captured by liver and sperm and uh, not able to fulfill their medical functions. And uh, for example, to be targeted by magnetic field to the region of our interest. But as soon as this particle circulate for a long time, that during a long time, they actually accumulate the, 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 um, in a tumor. So we increase uh, the um, number of particles delivered to a tumor in 30, uh, to 23 times. And uh, uh, more important, we're able to deliver such particles in a, uh, 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 femur and more important, uh, it's a marble uh, bone, which is uh, responsible for uh, uh, blood, um, um, uh, red blood generation and uh, the main, uh, main organ, why it's very difficult to cure um, uh, so-called cancer cells, because uh, we, we, we have to cure the the uh, mammal cancer cells. And here we able to, uh, to increase the delivery in certain times. But um, more important, uh, uh, after such procedure, we are able to dramatically increase the um, survival of, of the animals, even including uh, not only our own magnetic liposome, but uh, commercially available. And uh, okay, so, 
uh, last slide, which uh, I'd like to show. Also, this um, our MPQ methods was uh, very efficiently used uh, to uh, monitoring for a long time the biogradation because the particle after fulfill their the um, magnetic uh, medical function, they should biodegradate very fast. And uh, such technology very, was very useful to, and we detect, uh, we study one year fate of 80 different types of magnetic particles, uh, depending on uh, five parameters. And surprisingly for us, for example, uh, we faced with the fact that the same particles with the same material, but with different architecture. Uh, particle not distributed uniformly, but uh, only 91 nanometer polystyrene layer protects them. This led to dramatic and dramatically um, show the, uh, the, the uh, um, uh, biodegradation process. But most important slide is the next. I would like to thank all Kawasa of this paper. There's a lot of people, young people from uh, uh, General Physics Institute and uh, um, uh, Moscow, Physics, uh, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, and specifically for Alexei Alrov. He's the main person in my team who deal with the uh, uh, in vitro studies. Uh, Maxim Nikitin, who is a uh, uh, responsible for in vivo investigation, Avirian Pushkarov, and many, many other. So I will not uh, name all of them. They are all in the papers which I cited here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Peter, very much for this impressive talk.